I, I decided to put Deb in before, uh, before Deb Roy before Dr. Levy in order, in fact, to support the plausibility of Dr. Levy's projections about human sex with robots. <laughs> I know that may strike you a little strange, but that's because Dr. Roy wants to bring, well, he wants to equip robots with conversational language. And I would think you'd have to have a pretty good grip of conversational language if you're going to be a good robo gigolo. <laughs> but what, what actually caught my eye in Deb's case is that in support of his work as a student of language who wants to build machines that use and can interact with language in a fluid and human way. In the service of that, uh, he recorded minute by minute the bulk of his son's life from birth through to the age of three. And that in turn reminded me that I'd read somewhere that you could actually record an entire person's life, the entirety of a person's life, on one teraflop of data storage. And I think that's stunning. You know, can you imagine each of us carrying a total record of everything that we will have done and thought over the course of a lifetime? So, Deb, can you come out here and explain to us? Yeah? You're not reversing that. Well, in the book, you see, it's Levy first and then Deb Roy, but. Well, thank you. Uh, I've decided to not talk about robots. That is uh, a large part of what uh, my lab at MIT works on, and I'll just focus on uh, the uh, part that has to do with understanding language acquisition. Um, so language is arguably the defining feature of the human species. It's ubiquitous amongst our species. It's unique in the animal kingdom. Uh, it is the basic medium for social interaction. Without it, the creation and the transmittal of culture and technology would be impossible. And for an individual who has their ability to acquire or to use language when it's impaired or lost, the impact is devastating. So if we can get the slides up. I think it is no accident that one of the central questions uh, in uh, the cognitive sciences across the fields of uh, philosophy and psychology and artificial intelligence and linguistics uh, is how do children learn the meaning of words? And there is a, a number of theories uh, around why uh, children learn the way they do, how they represent concepts, how they make the connections between the stream of speech and, and the social and physical interaction that they engage in. And many of these theories contradict with one, one another. And knowing what the right theories are is critical. Our policies for education, our policies for how we intervene when a child has uh, problems, uh, all depend on the theories we hold. And those theories, like in any good science, need to be grounded out in data. And that's where the principal weakness um, of the field, from, from my point of view, lies. Uh, if you look at a typical piece of work in developmental psychology, the basic data, if you're interested in language acquisition, is typically, well, what's happening in the natural environment, the home? And the, the kind of recording equipment that's used, tape recorders, video cameras, uh, because of practical and technical limitations, uh, you will typically see a couple of hours of data taken maybe once a month for a few months, and from that, a lot of laborious work to mine out patterns and come to some kind of conclusions. And the problem for anyone here who has children, you, you'll know that a lot can happen in a month. And if you're just sampling a couple of hours, bringing in the tripod and watching mom and child play with toys, you're not getting the whole picture and I wanted to change that. So what we are embarking on, I believe, is just a small first step, a pilot uh, piece of work, uh, in what I hope will dramatically increase our understanding of how children learn and develop, and ultimately to apply what we learn, the methodology, the technology, the theories, uh, to early detection and treatment uh, of uh, uh, behavioral disorders. Um, so 
I notice that my clock is not running. This is good news for me, but uh, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I'm still at 20, so this, this is great. Uh, so what I'm going to be uh, talking about is a very special signal, uh, speech, uh, the carrier of symbols, and how speech is both uh, how it develops in the context of really the, the cradle of language, the home, and, and being able to quantify and understand the context within which speech uh, is uh, developing. And so the, the name of the project uh, is this uh, invented term speech ohm to really uh, put the focus on speech in the context of the home and the overall effort, the human speech ohm project, uh, decidedly to look at the complement of the genome, which of course shapes language and all other aspects of how we develop, uh, but the environment of course has a critical uh, role as well and we want to understand that balance. So this is my house. Uh, as Moses mentioned, I have now actually, uh, I'm the proud father of a three-year-old and a one-year-old, a three-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. And about uh, 35 months ago when my son was born, uh, we began making uh, what you might consider the ultimate home video collection. <laughs> so if you come to my house, that's my living room, and uh, if you look up in the ceiling of my living room, you'd see this camera. And there's a little privacy shutter next to the camera and a microphone, and what's unique about this camera is you have this bird's eye view uh, into the living room. So here you see uh, my son at the age of about three months and my wife. And the control for this home video system is very simple. There is a touch display on the wall. If you press the camera icon, it toggles to red. The shutter swings shut. You know you're no longer being filmed. Uh, similarly with the microphone icon to uh, tell the house to stop listening. Uh, the little exclamation point here, we call that affectionately the oops button. It's the anti-TiVo button. If you do something, you say, I don't want that on, on record, you press the oops button and you can delete uh, immediately and permanently back in time. Uh, very useful for when you walk out of the shower and then, oops. So. Uh, and the asterisk button is the last. That is the, the ooh, or the, that's something interesting just happened and I'd like to make sure we can go back uh, to that point. For example, my son takes his first steps. Uh, certainly want to be able to capture that. So now, we are looking at nine of 11 cameras in the house. And here is a time-lapse video of a day in the life, shutters coming in and out. If you look at this center left image, there's the crib. So we, you can see my son going in and out of naps. And as the sun sets and we go to incandescent orange light of evening, and eventually it's lights out at home. So we have been collecting more or less daily now for 35 months. Uh, you're looking at half of a 250 million megabyte storage array, which is holding uh, over 90,000 hours of high quality video and 140,000 hours of CD quality audio. These are multiple tracks uh, being recorded concurrently. And so together, uh, what you're looking at is, by several orders of magnitude, the most comprehensive uh, collection of one child's development from birth to almost three years, and July will be three years, ever made. So the first question is, how do you even navigate this kind of data set? A quarter of a million hours, uh, and just to tell you where we're gonna go in the end, this is just a pilot, and we are getting ready to expand the effort. So we've got a lot of data. So we will have millions of hours. Um, if you're a speech scientist, you would immediately recognize this image. It's called a spectrogram. Uh, this is a standard method for visualizing the content of an audio recording. Uh, experts can learn how to read spectrograms as if it's text. They could tell you what the person's saying. Uh, someone with just an hour of training will learn that these gyration patterns indicate presence of speech. Very useful visualization technique. We want to do the same for video. We've got 90,000 hours, but we don't care about all of it. We care about where there's human activity and we want to understand certain interaction patterns. So as my wife and I prepare a meal in the kitchen, it's a, a structured activity which may be uh, vital to understand for language development, we can expose the movement patterns, and now, as you'll see in this visualization, uh, as my wife and I traverse through the space of the kitchen, and we traverse time, so we're moving through space and time, we're leaving these trails. And you'll see my, I'm holding two plates there, and so we call these space-time worms. I'm leaving one, and of course my wife is leaving one. This is maybe the only excuse I ever have to refer to my wife as a worm, so. <laughs> There she goes. And what, of course, there is a certain aesthetic quality to this image, I think many people appreciate, but there's also a functional use. So this is a screenshot from a piece of software called Total Recall that we developed. Uh, you're looking now at about 10 hours 
uh, 10 minutes of media, three cameras, and you're all now able to read this visual language of space-time worms. So there's one person moving out of a room, walking into another, uh, and a spectrogram showing where there's speech and not. The power of this becomes clear as you zoom out. We're now looking at a day of data, 24 channels. Uh, and if you looked at this on a high-resolution screen, you could make out the space-time worms and read off of this immediately where the action is, how people are flowing through the house, when there is speech, when there's various kinds of activity. That's three months. So now let me drill down into just a tiny sample of a typical interaction at home. So there's my son leaning over this big blue ball. I'm sitting, sipping coffee. What's that over there? Over there, that ball. Game ball. Oh. He's approaching his second birthday. He said green ball. If we were to now imagine there's a spotlight coming out of my head indicating where I'm attending and one out of his. We're not even, ha we don't even have the same perspective, right? We're situated differently. And now we have the speech. Imagine it's transcribed. I say, what's over there? And I'm pointing past my son. He's looking at me. Then we have this moment, magic moment of communication called joint attention. We're both jointly attending to that ball. He says green ball. And then he closes that social loop and I give him verbal feedback. Just an everyday couple of seconds of interaction. But this dance, this choreographed interaction of our social attention, the way where we're looking, where we're situated, where the target objects are, and exactly how the speech lines up with all of that is critical. It's sort of this, the fabric out of which communication arises. And if, God forbid, my son, for example, had autism, that kind of interaction pattern would often break down. And what I'm going to do is take you for a little tour through the speech home, one little thread of my son learning to say the word water which he originally approximated by saying gaga, and over the course of about a year, learned how to say it uh, in more in the adult form. Notice it's not a simple linear progression. There's some regressions and progressions. Uh, this, if you are a developmental psychologist or a speech language pathologist, is magic, the ability to trace a trajectory, sort of like a, a flower blossoming, except it's the birth of a word. So we're, no audio, we're just gonna hear from gaga to water. cool, huh? And so I'll end with this image, which is one more space-time worm. This beautiful sinusoidal pattern uh, is a ball being pushed into motion by one of my favorite space-time worms, my son. And what we wanted to do was go beyond visualizing a minute or even an hour. How could you visualize an entire day of activity in our home? And so we had the idea, inspired by the the uh, double helix to take our space-time visualization and wrap it around a helix, each rotation being six minutes of activity. If you do the math, 10 rotations is an hour, 100 rotations gives you an, an entire day. And the visual textures here, uh, capturing all of the rich interaction, all the rich texture of everyday life in our home. And what this image depicts for me, it really is a symbol of what these new kinds of technologies are enabling, which is really a new view into ourselves as individuals, as social networks, uh, the most important ones uh, giving rise, uh, being, uh, uh, emerging in the home, and ultimately as a species. Thank you very much.